waiting on the Lord, trusting. Some scriptures in Isaiah says, wait on the Lord, and he will renew your strength. Others, um, other versions say, trust in the Lord, and he will renew your strength. Amen? So I'd like for us to stand this morning for the reading of God's word. It's just a couple of scriptures, and it's taken from Isaiah chapter 40, reading from verse 28. All righty then. To 31. Oh, oh okay. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Let's read together. Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Father, your word is already blessed. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Just want to encourage us a little bit this morning, you know, because I know Everybody is going through something. We don't always come and talk to each other about what we're going through. But everybody's going through something. But in the midst of your circumstances and your situations, never forget who you are and whose you are. Sometimes we get in stuff and we forget that we've accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior that he is our God, he is our Father, and he is there for us. But we don't acknowledge him. We don't call on him. And you've heard me say many, many times, the problem with people who don't act like they need help is they can't get help from God. When you don't ask him to help you, you don't get it. Because what does the Bible say? Okay, ask. He says, seek, and you will what? So if you don't seek, what? <laughs> you won't find. If you don't ask, and a lot of people, that's one of the reasons why you've heard me say many times when I pray. I said, the reason why we don't see miracles is because we're not giving God anything to work with. So we have stuff going on in our lives, and we keep it to ourselves. The Bible says, come to the elders, let them anoint you with oil, and let them pray for you. You don't do that. So then what? If you don't do that. So if you don't ask for help, you must be able to handle it. So how's that working out for you? Amen? So like I say, everybody's going through something. And sometimes it feels like the load is so heavy that it's killing you. And ain't nobody know like you know what's going on in your life. <laughs> Amen? And sometimes you feel like there's no hope. You don't know what to do. If this describes your situation this morning, hold on and listen. God has a word for you. In the scriptures that we just read, Isaiah is bragging on God, and he has something exciting to say, and he wanted to share something about God, and the thing that he was sharing is God, our God, is what? Powerful. Powerful. Don't let the enemy deceive you into thinking that there is a situation that our God, if you ask him, with you and him, cannot work through together. Amen? 
We just went through a series with Moses. A lot of times we undervalue ourselves, even to the point where we don't think we deserve God's help. Are y'all hearing me? (laughs) We don't get out of the way enough. We don't think that we deserve it because of what we may have done or what we may have gone through or what we're in now. That's the trick of the enemy. He want to keep you there. I am here to tell you, God loves you and it's not his wish that you perish. And he wants you to seek him. Amen? He wants you to seek him. Isaiah is bragging on God this morning in our scripture. Now, it's a sin to brag on yourself, but it's not a sin to brag on God. (laughs) Amen? Because God could back it up. He's all-powerful. So you could brag on him. Because he know how to show up and show out. Amen? Amen? You look at somebody's life and you wonder, how come they could act that way? They're doing something that you're not prepared to do, and that's fully trust in the Lord. It totally will change your attitude towards everything. You live in the same place, you experience the same things, you see the same thing. When somebody else can smile and be happy and you stress out, your trust is in the wrong place. Amen? Our God is wisdom personified. And he cannot fully be understood by finite minds, finite creatures, We are only able to understand him from what he chooses to reveal to us. Are you all hearing me? And even that revelation, you have to seek. It ain't an automatic thing. You got to look for it. And if you seek him, you will find him. If you ask the Holy Spirit to give it to you, he will. The problem is many people ain't seeking And what's also amazing, and this is what the Spirit of God wants me to remind you of this morning. Our God, as powerful as he is, he desires to share his power with us. Are you all hearing me? The almighty God desires to share his power with us. And the Holy Spirit will give us strength. He gives strength to the weary. And to those who lack might, he will increase their power. God takes great delight in empowering his children to do the works of the Father. We have many examples. He took Moses, a weak man, unable even to speak well, and gave him the power to part the waters so that Israel could walk across on dry land. That's an example of how he can turn our weaknesses into his strength. Are you all hearing me? He empowered a normal man called Samson to destroy thousands of enemies single-handedly. He transformed a teenage boy, David, into a giant killer. God takes great power in empowering his people. He takes great power in empowering the ordinary to do the extraordinary. He wants me to remind you of this this morning. Because we allow situations to to make us forget. To forget who we even are in him. (laughs) And that's not what's supposed to be. The problem is we're not as close to him as we need to be. 
That is why relationship is so important. This basic stuff, people. Amen? Because the closer he is to you, the more you'll always realize he's there. And there is no situation you feel you are alone in. Amen? These are simple truths. And it has nothing to do with judging someone. Because actions will always speak louder than words. So you can say with your mouth, oh, I got God. He's my everything. And then I see you scouring around like a chicken with his head cut off in a situation. Running from here, there, everywhere, confused, fearful, all these things. But what comes out of your mouth is God, 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 God. Are you hearing me? But if you were close as you say you were, your response and how you handle stuff will be evident. People who have spouses in their lives. You can't go around telling people you love your significant other. They never see you together. You don't do nothing together. You're talking down about them. And every time you get into a situation, you go into other people. So where's this person that you love so much? Where are they in your life? People won't have to wonder when they see you together all the time. Every time you're going through something, they're there. They're supporting you. They're doing all the stuff they need to do. It will be obvious that you all have a close relationship. Am I right or wrong? You can say what you want to say. They can see. <laughs> it's your actions that speaks for you. And that comes from a real place. You can't act like something that you're not. It's a real place. Our relationship with God needs to be real. And he wants to empower us. Do you know that the devil trembles at the thought of a baptized, born-again believer anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> it makes him sick to his stomach. <laughs> He scared us. He know who to touch and who not to touch. <laughs> Amen? We often fail God in two ways. When we operate on our own strength, on our own power, because eventually that's going to give out. We need the power of the Holy Spirit working in us, in our lives. We can only work on our own strength for so long before we grow weary and tired. People stress you out. Situations stretch you out. You stress you out. <laughs> Amen. And you get tired of all. You ever look in the mirror and get tired of your own self? <laughs> sick and tired of being tired, sick and tired of doing the same thing. And you look at yourself and say, why did I do that? Carol, I can see your teeth from over there. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Only so long we can do that, we get tired, you know? And secondly, because of our sinful nature, many times we stumble and fall. We fall into sin. And it's because of pride, discouragement, could be a number of things. But this body, this sinful nature, if we don't have something to deal with that outside of ourselves, that nature handles things in a certain way. And that is why we need the Spirit of God working in our lives, even to the point where we can receive what people say in a different way. Because we're not looking through the lens of the world, we look through the lens of the Bible. 
And the Bible tells us how to handle situations. That is why we need to be careful. Because discouragement is real. And if you're not careful, somebody can say some words to you and ruin an entire day. <laughs> if you don't keep your focus in the right place. Amen? Pride, discouragement. Galatians chapter 6, verses 8 and 9 says these words. Those who live to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And where we can get the strength from not to give up? Spirit of God. Those who live to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. We are talking about real places. Do not let the enemy deceive you into thinking that you can do something that is not right and reap something that is right. Are you all hearing me? <laughs> That's self-deception. Because you're only fooling yourself. Now, there's a difference between someone who's in struggle, trying to do what is right, and because of the weakness of their flesh, they fall. But then you recognize that as something that you didn't do or you should have done, so next time you're better at that and you don't fall at the same place. Are you all hearing me? And God knows your heart. He knows when you're trying. And he wants us to try to get better. God is promising us, even in this scripture, to use his power to work in our lives. But it comes with a single condition. And that condition is that we trust in the Lord. Other version says, wait on him. But we trust in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord means that we have an attitude and practice of living in complete dependence on the Lord and a willingness to allow him to determine our path in life. Amen? It must be about him. And you constantly hear me say that. It must be about him. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And he knows what's best for us. And if we'll only trust him, the direction that he will give us will be better than the one we're prepared to take ourselves. And many of us know that. Because we take our own individual paths and we see where that has led. And then we allow ourselves to be deceived into thinking we could do it again. It's a real place. But I, I think about God's love. It just amazes me. Because I look at my own life. And what a mess I was. And he still loved me. And he loved me so much that he waited till I hit my head so much times that I had such a pain and a swelling of being disfigured <laughs> that I gave up. And once I gave up and submitted to him, my whole life changed. Totally change. This ain't nothing that you got to go to school and get a doctorate degree about. <laughs> it's simple obedience and faith. 
And either you make up your mind to do that and accept God's best for your life, or you keep hitting your head, bucking your toe. You'll walk around with a cast forever because something will always be broken. And the thing about it is we all have the opportunity to be fixed. <laughs> Are you all hearing me? Ain't nobody less than nobody else. Ain't nobody better than nobody else. He loves us all. And we all have the same opportunity. It's just that we all don't make the same decisions. We're all not prepared to let go of self to the place where God, the Spirit of God, could lead us. The power of choice. If we choose him, he will deny us nothing. The power of choice. Ain't nothing like when somebody choose you over everybody else. Are you all hearing me? That makes you special. You know that? You go home to your husband or your wife every day. You pass a million women, a million men. And when you walk through the door, that spouse know, <laughs> that's mine. They choose me. You feel special. And that special feeling make you treat them special. Because you know how special you are in their eyes. They could have chosen somebody else. They could have chosen something else. But they chose you. And it's the same with God. When we let go of all of this, because we could choose it, but we choose him. Oh, that's a special place. Then he empowers us to do all sorts of things. The thing is, it is a real place. So hearing someone talk about it, you won't have an understanding until you go to that place. And that place is, you got to relinquish self and trust him. Am I making any sense to y'all? There's some things you just can't get until you go to another place. You can see it. You can hear about it. You can see other people experience it. But until you do it, it won't become real in your life. Isaiah said he's the everlasting God. He don't get tired. And that's not just getting tired of doing things. He don't get tired of loving and forgiving you and giving you an opportunity to fix yourself and wake up. Hello, God is saying, I'm here. And he pick you up again. And he pick you up again. You know how we do with babies. They poop themselves, you change the pampas. They fall down, you pick them up. They get into stuff and you don't box them around. You just gotta say, no, 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 don't do that. And you give them grace and you... <laughs> do you all understand what I'm saying? But it's all because he's trying to get us to a place to look up. I'm hoping that through this beating that you get, God is saying, one day you'll realize you don't have to continue doing this. <laughs> Amen? Those that trust in the Lord will mount up on wings like eagles. They will soar. You will be surprised to know what you could do if you put God on the throne of your life. Are you hearing me? Family, be careful how you looking out the lands of the world and holding on to this world. It's not God's best. It's God's best that you live here, but you walk in the spirit, not the flesh. And you will have a wonderful life because he can detach you from the things that you think make you happy. See, that's worldly. Things, stuff. Amen? You could be happy without stuff. It's a wonderful place. I know I live there every day. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with stuff. You know? That's your thing. That's your thing. God knows who to bless with stuff. 
Amen? Amen? The problem is we enjoy the stuff more than the person who blesses us with the stuff. We tend to let the stuff make us forget about God. So we enjoy being blessed, but forget the blesser. It's real talk, family. <laughs> Amen? We need to be reminded. He loves us. And when you recognize how loved you are, and how he wants to empower you, he wants to empower you to, to give you the strength to get up every day, take in that air, make plans, go to work, enjoy your children and enjoy your house and your family. And <laughs> Being selfish is a very lonely place to be. Because the deception is you can't pull somebody else into your selfishness and expect them to be as happy as you. Are you all hearing me? You can't make everybody like what you like. Because <laughs> that's what you want. And the enemy like to keep you there because then when they get upset with you for being there, now you mad with them. Like they got a problem. Huh? That's why the Bible says we need to make allowances for each other's faults. And we need to love each other. But that's on both ends. You got to love somebody enough not to suck them down into your stuff. Especially if it ain't right. We need to be able to mount up on wings that we could get out of the way then not only will we be better, I keep saying, but those around us will be better. Amen? Paul compared our lives of serving Christ with that of running a race. We can't do this thing on our own. We need to let God change us. We need to let the coach design a course of action for us. Because he can pull out of us things that we can't pull out of ourselves. The choir members will tell you, I always say, and I'm not the easiest person to get along with all the time. I'm a nice guy sometimes. <laughs> Y'all know that. Look this way, Kelly, this way, this way. <laughs> You're looking the wrong way. <laughs> you know, but um, if we could just, I always say to the choir, I pressure you because I'm pulling out of you stuff that you can't pull out of yourself. You can't do the things that I'm asking you to do on your own. Otherwise, I wouldn't have to ask you to do it. But God puts people in your life sometimes to pull out of you stuff that you can't pull out of yourself. And do they argue? Yes! <laughs> they argue sometimes. Well, what about it? <laughs> and then after arguing, what do they do? Y'all could beat me up later. Then after arguing, I'm talking about the choir members. Then after arguing, what do they do? They submit. And they end up doing the very thing that they were fighting me against to do and saying they can't do. And y'all have seen the evidence these people get up here and sound beautiful. Am I right or wrong? And it was a fight to get there. <laughs> and that's how we are with God. And it's not until we submit that changes are made. Amen? And then he makes something beautiful. Beautiful out of us. But we got to submit. That's, that's, that's the big thing. We got to die to this. Because <laughs> this, don't like chafing. 
And let me tell you all right now, no change comes without some kind of pressure. You see this piece of paper? If I want to bend this into a different shape, what I got to do? I got to apply pressure. But after I've applied it, it ends up into the desired shape that I want. But the problem with us is we want the shape. But we don't want the pressure to get there. We want to stay here and somehow think we could look like this. Can't happen. Paul compared us to serving Christ at running a race. He said to himself, he strives to serve in such a way that he would win the prize that Christ would award him. Paul reminded Actually, he reprimanded the Galatians. Galatians 5, 5, 7. It says, but we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Jesus Christ, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is more important is faith expressing itself in love. Do you all hear that? We live by the Spirit, eagerly waiting to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. Next slide. Okay, go back one. There's another verse in there, and I'm going to read it. See why I need your Bibles? No, no, you could go back. I mean, forward. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 7 says, well, like it says in verse 6, for when we place our faith in Jesus Christ, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is more important is faith expressing itself in love. 7, you were running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? It certainly is in God, for he is the one who called you to freedom. Who has held you back? It is in God. Amen? We blame so many things. But as we develop our relationship with God, the Spirit will show us that a lot of our problems is because of our sinful nature. Amen? And yes, there are outside influences, but the pressure that we have from our own sinful nature magnifies it. Amen? We gotta have the right attitude. I keep saying, be careful what you put in your cup. Because when you're shaking, what's coming out? Simple things. And we, we just exaggerate it. Somebody walk past you and you say hello and they're on their phone and they don't respond, they don't reciprocate. Your mind going to overdrive. Now she thinks she better than me. That poor child didn't even see you. <laughs> Amen? Now who making it a situation? Self. Just let it go. Family, I'm going to ask you this morning, what about you? Do you feel the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? What's the difference between when you first got saved, how you felt, and how you feel today? Or has life put such a beating on you, that joy and that excitement has been snuffed out? You're just going through the motions now. You don't get excited when you hear about Jesus anymore. You don't look forward to coming to the house of God anymore. And if it's not for you, then let it go. I am not judging anyone and I'm not blaming anyone. 
But if it is for you, I'm here to tell you, you need to come back to your first love. And you don't have to stay out there. Rekindle that fire. And that's what he wants. That is what he wants. You hear me all the time when I close the service. Anybody in the back sitting position, you don't have to stay there. You fall, you get up. We fall, we get up. We walk and we trip. Ain't nobody stay on the ground wallering. You got places to go, things to do, people to see. It ain't gonna happen down there on the ground. Get up! <laughs> Amen? Get up! The only difference between, and you see, that's why we got to stop making people so important. Because the only difference between some people, they fall behind the house and you fall in the front. So you fall in the front, other people see. Ain't nobody see when they fall in the back there. But trust me, some slipping going on somewhere. <laughs> Amen? We all go through the same things. We're people. But God don't want us to stay in a fallen place. He knows who we are and our weaknesses. But he don't want us to stay there. He wants us to get better. So you get up. And the next time you get there, you saw we trip you, you step over that. Because you learn now. You don't do that no more. This real life stuff. The answer is found in coming back to Christ. And allowing the Holy Spirit to breathe a new strength into your life. So that you can serve him under his anointing. Family, we need the spirit of God working in our lives. And those of us that trust and wait on the Lord will renew our strength and rise up. No devil in hell could stop you from getting what God got for you. Don't let no talk, talk discourage you. And don't let what you see discourage you because we serve a God he does impossible and amazing things you don't have to see it for him to work it out that's the problem we don't want to do nothing until we see it when we see it we want to trust God God is saying trust him first then you'll see it amen we need to trust God we want the best that God has for us in our lives and to live in this world today, you need the Spirit of God operating in your life just to function. Otherwise, you'll be consumed with all this stuff that's going on around here. And it's not that the stuff ain't serious. But how you handle it and respond to it will make the difference. Because with Christ in the vessel, you could smile at the storm. Amen? I didn't say the storm wouldn't happen. <laughs> but you handle it different. And God will give you the strength to walk out this life. So to the hopeless, I say with conviction, God will give you the strength to finish the course that you started in Jesus' name. He is able To help you complete. Are you all hearing me? You cannot do it on your own. I'm going to say that again. You and I cannot do it without Christ. The life that God has designed for us cannot be lived without him. There is a life that can be lived without him, but it wouldn't be God's best for you. And too many people are settling for that life, which they consider to be a good life, rather than the best life that God has for them. God don't want us to live below our potential. I want us to repeat something today. I want you to repeat after me. Lord, I recognize my complete dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask you today 
to spiritually renew in me so that I can finish the course that you have set before me. May you give me the strength that I need in Jesus' name. Let's stand to our feet. Those that wait and trust on the Lord will renew their strength. Life has a way of beating us down, getting us weary. The Bible says, don't get weary in well-doing. But the only way that can happen is if we have the Spirit of the Lord working in our lives. We need him, people. We need him. It's not too late. You may have taken a detour in life. All you got to do is call out the name of Jesus. He hears you. He will restore you. Don't make this about people. You always hear me say, ain't nobody got no heaven to put you in. Be worried about the one who can save your soul. Be worried about the one who deals with eternity. Ask him to forgive you, to restore you, to give you the power in the Holy Spirit to serve him and to finish well. Are you all hearing me? We just did the series on Moses. And I hope you all realize that when I say Canaan is God's best for us, that was his preferred preference for the children of Israel. To take them out of slavery and give them a land of milk and honey. That land was his best for them. But Moses missed that best. He fell short of the full potential that God had for him. And I hope you all realize this ain't about heaven. This is about God's best. You all do understand that, right? <laughs> and what we want and what God wants is for you to get his best. Not to live below. Not to allow situations and stuff that you're dealing with to keep you from a place that God has for you. Which is the best for you. The best for me. Amen? And that's why we got to put these principles into practice. Fix what we need to fix so we can experience God's best. And we need that today, people, in this world the way it is today. Are you all hearing me? He will renew your strength. If you slip, get up. Don't stay down. And don't worry about what people think or how it looks. This about you and God. Amen? He is the everlasting God. He is the all-powerful. He never gets tired. He never gets weary. And all he's doing is sitting there waiting for you to access him. Big God. Big God. There's nothing too hard for God. No situation that he won't forgive you for. But he wants you to acknowledge him this morning. Is there something that you need prayer for in your life today? Is there something that we need to access the heavens for? If we don't go to him, he can't help us. <laughs> Amen? If we act like we don't need him, then we don't need him. But if you need him, then you need to call on him today. Amen? He will renew your strength. And you will be able to mount up like wings of an eagle and soar high above all these situations. It has nothing to do with taking them out of your life. It has everything to do with empowering you to deal with them. Amen? That's what we want. The power to deal with with what we face on a day-to-day -day basis, starting in our own house. <laughs> That's the first place you need the Spirit of God for. Amen? If you don't know Jesus, you can accept him this morning. 
and become a part of the family of God. If you do know him and you've fallen, you can come back to God, repent, turn around, tell God you're sorry. He'll accept you and move on and do better. They brought the woman to him, caught in adultery. She was caught. He asked her the question. And he says, that's right. You don't have no husband and the person you're with now ain't yours. But I forgive you. Go and sin no more. And that's the same with anything in our lives. Go and sin no more. It's as simple as that. Because you want to make sure as much as possible in your life, you line up with this. Get as close to this as possible. We ain't perfect. But he knows when you're trying. Amen? Amen. If you need prayer for anything, let's pray for you. Let's pray together. These are times when we need to pray. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of distractions. Things that will keep our eyes off of where we need it to be. And that's on Jesus. But if you do know him, then we have an open sacrament. You can take the Lord's Supper with us. The tables are open. And you know how we do it here. The body represents, the cracker represents the body of Jesus and, and, the, and the cup represents the blood. So come, let's remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for our sins. Let's continue to worship in this way. The altars are open. Come.